Greetings and salutations, my wonderful friends. It is now 6.30 p.m. and I'm standing on Caledonia Road just outside the Tim Hortons here. But I just came out of the Home Depot looking for solar eclipse goggles. They don't sell them there. But it says on the internet that Home Depot can sell them, but the, their stock is very limited and they run out quickly. And then I, well, first I wanted to go to that uh, Rona. Well, I wanted to go to that Lowe's store, which is now Rona. It says on the application that Lowe's still exists, but they changed it to Rona. See, when I tell you that the Maps application, the Apple Maps is misleading, none of this is wrong because... I are, I've already been misled. I know this used to be a Lowe's, then I went there and it's a Rona. And according to the internet, Rona probably doesn't sell solar eclipse goggles. But I'm like, I'm out of luck. I don't have any solar eclipse and there's the 2023 Nova LFS hybrid. But I, you see, I'm looking for I desperately need solar eclipse goggles because I have none and ever since I've been hearing about the SE which is happening tomorrow I was wondering where you'd get eclipse goggles but now they're, they've been running out I went to Jane and Dundas library yesterday because they said that libraries give them out for free I couldn't find them anywhere. There was no sign that said, get your Eclipse glasses here. None of that. It was just same old, same old. So I honestly wish I researched this kind of stuff sooner so that I'd be well prepared in advance. I wish I did this three weeks ago or something, but now I'm out of luck. The Eclipse is tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, there will, there will not, not be any more total SE until the 22nd century. And look at that. It, it looks like pieces of shards, glass shards. That's a safety hazard. Like, we don't want the dogs to be eating those. Or people to be... to uh, step in them. Even if you're wearing shoes, it still poses a hazard. So, I'm supposed to be at home eating dinner at this time, but um, dinner time is going to have to be postponed probably an hour later because I had a very late lunch and I ate like two to three hours ago. So really, I'm not that hungry, but I was at my family member's house doing a bit of a chore. Here's a thumbnail opportunity. And you know, there was, there was no food, so I was starving. And this is what re real hunger feels like. It's not pleasant at all. But I'm now fed, and that's why I'm out, even though I should be having dinner. Well, at least that's part of the reason. So there's the Starbucks right there. I had a thought to pop in and redeem my stars for a free Frappuccino, but I thought, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe I should film a walk-in video instead. Right along this route and I'll explain it in a sec. So this over there is the York Beltline Trail, which, yeah, it's, you can't see it very well, but eventually it's gonna join up with the K Gardener Beltline because they're gonna build a Beltline Bridge across Allen Road. 
We are currently in the York Borough, and I believe this is Castlefield Road, or is it Castlefield Avenue? It's Castlefield Avenue. So speaking of Starbucks, in that Home Depot, I heard that song, Blank Space by Taylor Swift, and I misheard the lyrics. I. I mishear the lyrics. It sounds like she's singing Starbucks Lovers when she's really singing... Well, I don't remember exactly the year, the lyrics, but I think it's something... Go only your ex-lovers, they'll tell you I'm insane. The, like, the real lyrics is ex-lovers, but it's it sounds so much like she's singing Starbucks Lovers. I'm one of them, to be honest as you guys know. But you know what? It's a nice walk for... It's a nice evening walk. Sun is still pretty high up in the sky. Oh, look at that. There's a dead squirrel here. Well, that's gruesome. I wonder how that squirrel got killed. Well, rest in peace, Mr. Squirrel. Let those insects come in eat you up. Dead creatures always attract all kinds of bugs. I don't know why they like dead creatures so much. So yeah, just behind those trees is the York Belt Line, which ends a little bit uh, further west. Now, we used to, my family and I would drive along this the street like we would drive right through here quite often we used to frequent this route when I used to go to the Geneva school the Geneva Center for Autism at a younger age and my dad calls it the Geneva school route all because of that because we used to drive along here to get to the Geneva Center that's located near Young Street in between Young and Mount Pleasant Road It's pretty quiet now, being a Sunday evening. But that's the route we'd always take. And I had a... One of my brothers used to live in Midtown Toronto. So we'd drive along here to get to their place as well. But I think it's... This street has, like, so many memories... So that's why my folks like it so much to drive along here. Oh, there's an abandoned tire. Well, it's not a tire, it's um, yeah, here we go again. I don't know what it's called. There's gotta be a name for it, but they put it in between tires. It always frustrates me every time I don't know what something is called. So this here, I believe, is the Berry Line. The GO Train Berry Line. You get quite a view from here when looking down Prairie Land. You can see the apartment building on Eglinton from here. Private property, so we can't go on the tracks. I think the Barry trains still, the Barry Go trains still run in the evening on Sunday evenings. Cause I remember taking it back in October to get to Wonderland's Halloween haunt. But yeah, I honestly feel it just drains my self-esteem anytime I see an object and I can't even name what it is. That's all part of my learning disability. Oh my gosh, having a learning disability is so damn frustrating. I can't stress this enough. In order to be a professional YouTuber, I have to have great vocabulary, not limited, and my vocabulary is limited. 
and I have to be able to name each and every item I see. Instead of describing it all in paragraphs. So this here is Little Jamaica. And it's called that because there's a lot of Jamaican residents living along here. Okay, let's make this light. Oh, it gives me even more time. Just like how Miami, Florida has little Havana neighborhood. Well, the neighborhood is quite big. It's kind of like a borough. But little Havana, because there's, it's the capital city of Cuba and Miami is very known for its Cuban influence. But this neighborhood here is known for its Jamaican influence. So that's where they get the name. They, a lot of cities have neighborhood names, little country, city. There's little Tokyo in LA because they say that LA is very Japanese. But I'm a little surprised about that because Japan is technically a wealthy country. So I think those Japanese should be happy where they are because not only is it very wealthy, it's also high tech, very high tech. You've got those bullet trains. Going to Japan is definitely on my bucket list and I'll make sure I get a chance to ride on the bullet train. But they, they go like 300 kilometers per hour, 300 miles per hour at least. So it's kind of like floating on a cloud. Pretty soon we'll be approaching Keelsdale. Because then it becomes Keel Street. Well, I think it... I, I'm not too sure, but it also interlines with Trithui Drive. So now we're entering a side street, and I'm just trying to think where my family and I would have driven. I think we would drive right where I'm walking, and then come out through Trithui, which that must be it down there. weather pattern is now changing because this week we're reaching 17 degrees so the temperatures will be in will be in the teens pretty much all week this week and then I'm off for vacation next week I'll give you a little more update as we get closer. So that there, that looks a little bit like either a duplex or a triplex. Oh, here comes a motorcycle. Uh-oh. I'm afraid of those guys. I hate those guys. I really do. When I say guys, I mean motorcycles, not people. Speaking of, a mo of motorcycles, there's a couple in the driveway there. But I'm not going to point the camera because it's not polite to point to other people's property. So I think we'll end, thing, end the video off on Eglinton. Then I'll hop on the 32 and then the 73 
and it'll take me right home. So now we're in an area made up of small businesses to the south and very residential around here. And then a, a bit of uh, commercial activity to the, um, a little bit to the north. That looks like a 2023 Nova hybrid bus because I could see the silver tires a little bit. I do see things from far away. No wonder I don't wear glasses. My vision is pretty good. So that looks like Keel Street. Almost there. One of my favorite style of homes. Very modern looking. Yeah, that's Keel Street up ahead. So pretty soon we'll be in Keelsdale neighborhood. That's where York Civic Center is, which is a place that that hosts homeless people when there's extreme cold. So that's 41. I'm just trying to think. That was not the Nova Hybrid bus. It was it was a new flyer XDE40 that that I saw just now. Because the Nova Hybrids and the new flyer Excelsior buses, they look quite alike. You can't really differentiate them from the side unless it was a not in service bus like this one. But it's just so hard to differentiate between those two. Because the roof is red, the livery is the same. They both say hybrid electric on top. And I just saw the um, another one of those buses, which are replacing the OG hybrids. Speaking of an OG hybrid, I was on one coming here on I was on 1052 which is a Wi-Fi bus there's still quite a few of those still around I guess they decided to retire the Wi-Fi units last but most if not all of the 1100 series. The 1100s are pretty much all gone. And now I'm looking at what am I looking at? It looks kind of like downtown Etobicoke or Etobicoke City Center. It's very hard to tell from the distance. You don't recognize it as much. When you're on a plane landing at YYZ, even though it's your home city, 
you may not recognize every each and every area as much. Some buildings may look familiar, but you can't really tell where it is because it's, uh, you know, you're up. You just don't recognize it as much when you're up from a plane and you don't recognize it as much from the distance. But those buildings, those tall buildings really do look familiar. But that cannot be downtown Toronto because downtown Toronto would be a little bit east. You know what? I think I'm going to continue down here and then we'll end things off at Keelsdale. Uh, well, Keelsdale future LRT station. It's unknown when Line 5 will open. But all we do know is there will be some buses that will either terminate or um, go into Keelsdale Station. Sometimes buses can come into the station, then they continue on. Here comes the Orion NG Hybrid bus from 2008. For example, 63 Ossington, it starts off at Eglinton West Station and then goes down to the Cam H area via Ossington Station. And 32, 52, they go into Eglinton West and Lawrence West Station, then they continue and terminate at Eglinton and Lawrence Station. So, it could be the same here. I think, I'm pretty sure there is a sign that shows which bus routes will end up inside of Heelsdale LRT station. Oh, look at that. What do you know, my favorite type of bus? Oh, that reminds me of something. Um, the, I noticed another YouTuber made a community post out of my favorite type of bus, a Ryan 7NG hybrid in classic livery. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. Uh, it uh, means a lot. Pretty soon I'll be quite famous. So thanks for posting the picture and thanks for the shout out in the community post. It does mean a lot. You know what? Maybe there's a, maybe there's a bit of a chance. Let's see. Oh wait, that's the 32D, no, we don't want that one. And 32C uh, goes up towards Trithui. Yeah, 32D goes into Eglinton Flats, so even if I could take that bus, well, even though I wanted to take that bus, I can't because uh, it's not gonna take me to Royal York, and this isn't gonna take me to Royal York e either. So there's the south entrance to Keelsdale. Hey, the north entrance is open. Not open to the public yet, but the side door is open. And, it, you know, it just has some 21st century vibes, how they they letter the word Keelsdale on every single window pane. Just, like, look at that. And this here would be the bus terminal. Okay, so what does that say? Okay, I, when I said I could see things from far away, only the big things, the small things like the route number, I can't see from that far. Do not enter. Well, I'm still outside the fence, so... Looks like it says 164. I'm just trying to test my faraway vision. 
but the, I can definitely read what it says, and it says Castle Field on it. I just don't recognize the, the number. Oh, there's 32A. That's the bus I need. Thank you.